welcome to another tactical fly fisher fly tying tutorial uh, in this tutorial I'm going to be tying for you the BBS or buy it back stone this is a nymph pattern that's been uh, very successful for me for trout and even for steelhead and clear water uh, all across the, the United States and as far away as Slovenia um, I really uh, like this stonefly pattern because it nicely imitates the dark back and light ventral surface you'll typically see on stonefly nymphs. Uh, this, uh, this pattern is in a golden stone variation but you could easily um, change the, the color scheme to imitate the types of stoneflies that you'll find in your local waters. Alright, let's get started. Uh, you can see I'm using a Hannock 970 for this fly but you could use uh, a, a jig hook for smaller sizes or just any other straight nymph hook. This happens to be a, a streamer hook. Uh, go ahead and lay down a, uh, a base of thread all the way up and down the shank. That's going to be important for the next step uh, where we're going to tie in some lead wire on both sides of the shank. Now tying in the wire on both sides will give this fly a very wide profile, at least compared to wrapping the lead wire, which is nice not only uh, to imitate the, the flattened shape of a stonefly nymph, but also provides a wide base for the biots that are going to go over the back for uh, the shell back and the tails. Go ahead and just break your, your wire off after you tied it in. and put one on both sides. The next step is to tie in some golden stone medium uh, D-rib. Then you're going to take some ginger uh, rabbit dubbing and dub a thin rope on the, the, the thread. The important thing to remember when you're dubbing is that less is more and oftentimes um, you can easily get too much if you dub it into a clump and then you have to uh, pick it all off later or it makes an uneven body so add a little bit at a time and go nice and thin. You can always add more but it's certainly much harder to take it off. Remember that stoneflies typically are not uh, thin, dainty little nymphs. They're, they're fairly uh, bulbous compared to like a mayfly. So you, you do want to make this body thicker than you might uh, some other types of nymphs. You can see the easiest way to do this is just to hold the dubbing ball in your left hand and that way you can easily transfer a little bit of time. Now I'm going to take uh, two paired goose biots. These are brown. and I'm going to pair up the tips and tie them in facing back. And then take the D-rib and uh, make a tight turn behind the dubbing. That's important to get the tails right. Then you'll make your next wrap over into the tails and then just go ahead and uh, wrap in loose wraps up the, the shank and you want to do it under tension the whole time and if those tails are uh, together to begin with you can manipulate them with your thumbnail in order to get them to spread apart you can see that uh, D-rib provides a really nice uh, indentation effect Now if this was a smaller pattern, I might be able to fold these biots back and then tie in rubber legs and then use the same biots for the wing case. But on this longer hook, this is a size 8 uh, Hannock 970, on this longer hook the biots just aren't long enough. So in, uh, in order to make sure we have enough, I'm adding uh, another couple of biots here. And you can tie them in facing back.
Then I've got some brown life flex that I'm going to attach and just simply put one on each side. The easiest way to, to tie these on is to use your left thumb to hold it in place and make sure it, uh, it's in the right place before you make your wraps. And it certainly helps to have a rotary vise if, to be able to turn and see where you're placing it on the hook. It's a little bit more difficult without it. For the thorax of this fly, I'm just going to add some more of this uh, ginger rabbit dubbing. You could easily uh, use a darker color dubbing if you wanted to make a two-toned effect for the abdomen and the thorax, but uh, I've already done that with the biots here, so I'm just going to keep the same dubbing color. And you do want to make the thorax a little bit thicker than the abdomen. So keep adding a little bit of dubbing at a time until you get the right proportions. Go ahead and advance your thread in front of the rubber legs and then pull the goose biots over the top and hold those rubber legs out of the way with your left hand and snake your, your thread through them and tie down those biots. Then fold the biots back and uh, tie, tie them down in front. That'll really lock them down and help them to avoid slipping out as you're fishing the fly. And as you can see, I like to guide my scissors with my, my left thumb to make sure I chop only the biots and not the rubber legs. Then to finish the fly off, you could easily just whip finish here, but I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit more dubbing just to cover up those uh, ends of the biots and those thread wraps. Makes a little bit neater looking fly. And to make sure this is nice and durable, I'm adding just a little bit of super glue and I'm going to make several wraps and then whip finish again. And then the one last thing that I'm going to do here is just uh, rake out the dubbing with this dubbing brush a little bit. Make sure I have a nice wide profile and that the, it looks as buggy as it can be before it gets in the water. And there you have it. That's the Buy It Back Stone. Thank you for joining me for this tactical fly fisher fly tying tutorial. Please feel free to like and share on Facebook and uh, also subscribe to my YouTube channel for more videos. The materials for this fly can also be found on tacticalflyfisher.com. Thanks for watching.